In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use binomial expansion, the beautiful Pascal's triangle, and finally the product rule for derivatives to solve such daunting derivatives as simply as possible. The first thing you need to know is the binomial expansion. You might have seen this expression frequently, which can easily be derived by directly multiplying these two parentheses. You can do the same thing for other orders, but it can sometimes be really exhausting. For example, you can do the daunting task for order 4 and check the results. Now, take a close look at the coefficients of the expressions for these expansions and see if you can find a pattern. They somehow form a triangle known as Pascal's triangle, in which the two sides are 1s and the other numbers are the sum of the two numbers above. For example, 3 plus 3 is 6 or 6 plus 15 is 21. Now you might want to ask if we can come up with a general formula for this binomial expansion. And the answer is fortunately yes, we can. We can use the combination formula to do so. It can be written like this and it is n factorial divided by r factorial n minus r factorial. 1 choose 1 is 1, 2 choose 1 is 2, and any other number choose 1 is itself. 2 choose 2 is 1, 3 choose 2 is 3, 4 choose 2 is 6, and 4 choose 3 is 4. Now let's get back to Pascal's triangle. There is a pattern that can help us use combinations to form this triangle which consists of the coefficients of binomial expansion. These are the first five binomials starting from n0 to n4 and I suggest you to pause the video for a moment and take a close look at how they're forming. The general formula for binomial expansion can be written as a sum. It starts with the highest order for A and ends with the highest order for B. Now let's move on to the product rule for derivatives. If we have two functions u and v and take this derivative, the answer will be this. Let's call this one dv and the other one du. So we can write the derivative as the sum of two derivatives that just act on either u or v. If we want to find the higher order derivatives of the multiplication of the two functions, we can write it as a binomial expansion of dv and du. If we expand the sum, the expression we have is like this. And it simplifies into this one, which is actually simpler and more direct. As an example, let's find this derivative in which u and v are x and sine x. The last two parts are zero because the second and third derivatives of x are zero. And the answer is something like this. Let me show you a way so you can find the higher order derivatives of sine and cosine more easily. The first derivative of sine is cosine. The second derivative of sine is minus sine. The third one is minus cosine. And the last one, the fourth, is again the sine. And now we have a kind of loop. So this is the loop I was talking about. And we can easily find the higher orders. If the remainder of n divided by 4 is 1, the answer is cosine x. If the remainder is 2, the answer would be minus sine x. We have minus cosine x for the remainder 3 and sine x for the remainder 0. For example, 28 is divisible by 4 and so the answer is sine x. Now let's have some fun and find this one. There are just three terms and all the others are gone, 0. We have 99, 98, and 97 as our derivative orders, which I like to see as this sum. And the first two terms are divisible by 4, so these numbers are the remainders. And based on the remainders and our trigonometric circle, the derivatives are minus cosine x, minus sine x, and cosine x. We also have x squared and its derivatives, and the combinations as follows. And the final result is something like this. Now, let's do something fun and define a function of n and m and see how it can be useful. We can write it as this sum. The derivative of x to the power of m is this as long as m is bigger than or equal to k. And when k gets bigger, the derivative is 0. And for the derivative of sine of x, we can write it as the sine of 
x plus a multiple of pi over 2, which satisfy our circular interpretation. So our final result is this sum, which is a multiplication of x to the power of something and a sine or cosine. Pay attention that the upper limit of the sum is the minimum of m and n. Somehow, n and m control the number of terms we have in the expansion. So if m is bigger than or equal to n, we will have n plus 1 terms. But if m is less than n, there would be m plus 1 terms. In this case, some terms will disappear. I'm just thinking of a kind of 1 by n plus 1 matrix multiplied by an n plus 1 by 1 matrix. And I wonder if this function has any computational functionality. Okay, I, I don't know, but... It might have something. I'm just thinking about it. So in our example, we just used sine of x, but there are other functions that can be multiplied by x and show the same behavior or even some other combinations. But the important thing here is to see how different functions and operations like, for example, derivatives behave. So we may one day use them for a specific framework and make something new.